The purpose of the 1980 Child Abduction Convention is in its preamble, and the preamble notes, the interests of children are of paramount importance in matters relating to their custody. The Convention has a desire to protect children internationally from the harmful effects of their wrongful removal or retention, and to establish procedures and mechanisms for international cooperation that would remedy the wrongful removal or retention. The main private international law issue identified with the child's abduction is what this explanatory report characterizes as the use of force to establish artificial jurisdictional links on an international level. The child abduction thus seeks to avoid a situation where a parent or any other person with custody rights gains advantages from unlawfully or wrongfully removing a child to or retaining a child in a foreign jurisdiction. And as a result, the Convention acts as a deterrent to many potential abductions by ensuring safe, with some very limited exceptions, and prompt return of wrongfully removed or retained children and allows them to return carefully and safely to the country of the child's habitual residence. And so, of course, the Convention then, firstly, acts to prevent child abductions, and secondly, provides for a procedure and a mechanism of international cooperation that remedies the wrongful removal or retention of the child. It also secures the effective exercise of rights of access in an international child abduction situation. Now, what are the achievements of the Convention? Since it entered into force in December of 1983, the Convention has impacted many children worldwide by creating a widespread and effective network of contracting parties that worked together to protect children in these international child abduction situations. As of December 2021, the Convention currently counts with 101 contracting parties globally and located on all continents. Post-Convention Services and work at the Hague Conference focuses on inclusiveness and universality, which is a particular achievement that we are very proud of. I'll give you two examples. We have for the Child uh, Abduction Convention, the International Hague Network of Judges, a network globally of judges, liaison judges, which was created to facilitate cooperation at the international level. Now, additionally, we have a very unique space of dialogue on family law and child protection among contracting parties and non-contracting parties of Islamic tradition, which is called the Malta process. And this is also a direct result of the convention. Now, of course, there are many achievements that we could cite in the 40 years of the convention's existence. Uh, but I think the most important one is undoubtedly the fact that the convention has enabled very quick very effective responses to protecting children in danger and children in situations of cross-border uh, difficulties. Now, always giving the child's interest paramount importance and also by always creating an increasingly truly global, connected and engaged network. So, of course, the question arises, how does the Child Abduction Convention preserve a child's right to identity and to family relations? Now, the Convention is a live instrument. Uh, it was concluded in 1980, and so it predates the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child by a good nine years. The Convention, however, must be interpreted according to its context and in light of its object and purpose as it's set forth in Article 31 of the Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. As in the preamble of the Convention says, the drafters were convinced that the interests of children are of paramount importance in matters relating to their custody. At the time, this was a breakthrough. This is before the United Nations Convention and putting the child right at the epicenter of a convention was an, inno an innovation that the Convention is very rightfully proud of. Now, the protection of a child's right to identity and to family relations, and broadly speaking, the protection of the best interests of the child in cases falling within the scope of the Convention, is of course in line with the purpose of the Convention. Quite concretely speaking, by protecting children in international child abduction situations, the Convention protects the right of the child to family life, as enshrined in Article 9 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, by preventing the taking person from taking advantage of wrong, the wrongful removal or retention to the detriment of the left behind parent or guardian and allowing the child to have contact and access to both parents. 
the right of the child, of course, is to participate in decisions as well that affect their lives. The Child Abduction Convention secures a situation that one of the parents cannot unilaterally alter a custody, a custody determination and that a custody procedure will be respected and, and at least discussed in a forum which considers the best interests of the child. It also establishes the, that the authority can deny the return of the child um, if, there are a, if the child opposes the return. Child Abduction Convention is very special in that it creates this network of what we call central authorities, which means it bypasses all the diplomatic uh, relations that these sort of cross-border cases have to usually go to if the, the convention had not existed. This means that cooperation is at the heart of the Child Abduction Convention. Article 7 of the Convention establishes a series of measures that central authorities of contracting parties must take. Among such measures, central authorities shall cooperate and shall take all appropriate measures to, for example, discover the whereabouts of a child, to exchange information relating to the child's social background, and even to facilitate obtaining provisional measures for protection or providing administrative arrangements to secure the safe return of the child. Now, all of these will ultimately impact on the protection of the rights of the child in an international abduction situation.